Well, well, what's going on everybody? It's a new day, it's a new stream on the official Illuvium Twitch. Happy to have you all, happy to be live. What's going on everybody? We're gonna get it on right here, right now, playing some Illuvium Private Beta 1. 
and we're gonna play our first round in competitive mode as you can see zero total waves zero total enemies killed we're gonna change that and we're gonna see how far we can go in our first try of the day this are tournament settings so if there is a tournament right now it's gonna be as as soon in the exact time when the deck resets so everybody has a fresh new deck and yeah and we always play it in competitive mode if we play a tournament there have been a few so far and there's many more coming up so stay tuned for that as always we're gonna play the air bladed shield and the hybrid armor this weapon for the ranger is by far the most balanced and maybe not the most balanced is definitely one of the best if not the best but it's the most consistent because it gives us a bulwark and it's basically a pretty solid tank so looking at the team today we saw earlier 22 of is the rank one right now the highest wave that has been done today is wave 22 so that's what we want to beat today and i think we're up for it so titan right here really strong we got a ramfire blaze knight adorator ramfight fernite rake axodon kukorov ripterus alfie scarabog fury axon vermi lura arcos ripta kuka and tatubi we're gonna get in for the first run a ramfire why not so we got a lot of stage one illuvials as you can see a lot of stage two illuvials i mean quite a decent amount and we don't got so many stage three illuvials so we're missing stuff like ripe lands and scoriox and Ooh, <laughs> uber uh umbre and stuff like this so that's why the rank one right now is only wave 22 and not wave 30 yet I still think this could go up to wave 30, but it's gonna be super, super hard. We also don't got double granite for the Titanor. Let's look at the bulwarks. We're pretty low on the bulwarks too. We don't have any unit of the flare line. We don't have flare singe or seer, which are kinda... You need a, a, a singe or a seer usually to get high up there because they really counter those assassins coming in. So we gotta rely on our Titanor without the granite buff. Oxidon is definitely gonna come in. Scarabok is gonna come in for sure too. And then probably an Arcus will be in there a lot as well. Alrighty, right now I think we can just put in a Fury because this guy does a lot of single target damage. And that's what we need to get through that Singe. Our Ram fight is gonna take care of that Archie. Let's roll it. I hope you all had a, an amazing day so far. I just drove down to Portugal in my van. If you didn't know, I'm streaming in my van. I got a full streaming setup located here. I got really good solar panels providing me basically... I can stream for three days without sunlight all day long. So yeah, pretty set up. And yeah, today we drove down from Spain to Portugal. I love it in Portugal already, but it's so hot. And I have to wear the hat because that's my trademark and it's kind of cool in the van But maybe later I have to put it off if I start to have some sweaty rounds in here Alrighty, let's bring in the chat and see what everybody has to say Boom there it is awesome. It worked So we got hello and we got I can't DM dick kings for the beta on Twitter You can help me. Yes, I can help you first of all you want to follow the discord channel um, somebody will be able to link that for you later on. <laughs> Did he just call me mom? Like, does your mom wear that hat or... <laughs> Why do you call me mom? <laughs> that kind of disturbs me. Alrighty, our, we want to get in more damage before we get in another support. Because support is kind of the last thing we want to bring in. So, I don't know. Let's bring in the Oxidon. Should I not let him main tank? Ah, oh, it's good range is getting attacked so about that beta access that you're talking about right here uh, you want to join the official Illuvium discord you want to sign up for the beta at the Illuvium IO official homepage and every week we're doing a trivia event in the Illuvium discord and if you get one point right in that Illuvium trivia event if you just get one score onto the leaderboard you get a beta access and it's usually pretty easy and also usually if you go in there you're the only because there's i think 20,000 players in the beta already so if you go on in there and say yo i don't have a beta access yet everybody else who gets one point in the trivia 
will be able to give away his beta access if he has already one. And usually you just get one anyway if you just participate. So just come in the weekly trivia events in Discord and I'm sure you get a beta access very soon. Be active in the Discord. It's an amazing community in there. You won't regret it. And what are we gonna get in there? Probably just a Ripter. Get a bit more damage. Perfect. Our ramp fight is gonna focus Furyox first. Axodon is gonna overpower this Ramphy right there and let's roll it. <laughs> My mom can see me on the screen. Ah, oh, now I get it. I thought I wear. <laughs> you said I, I wear a. I wear a hat that your mom was wearing. Yes, hi mom. My mom can see me on the screen too. Like I, I showed her my YouTube channel. It was a bit weird at first, like telling her, yo mom, I'm doing YouTube videos for a web free digital collectible game called Illuvium. <laughs> Trying to explain it to her, but she just watched the YouTube and she was like proud that I do like good content. Like she, she was able to enjoy it even though she doesn't know at all what's going on. So that was good. I'm trying to study this and it's all, it's too much. Well, it seems a bit much at first, but a really, really core um, core value at Illuvium is that the game should be very accessible for beginners and if you go to my YouTube channel it's called Illumination uh, the first few videos I put out they are all very 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 beginner friendly they're meant for people who never saw an auto battler to understand an auto battler so go check that out might that might help you and it seems a, a lot at first of course but it gets easier the more time you put in there alrighty we're chilling still it's just the first five waves so I hope Oxidon there does a good job tanking everybody Umbre does so much damage this is such a high damage unit so we gotta take care gotta take care for this guy <laughs> Yeah, I wish we had that command. Flash solar panel. Well, it's uh, it's two times a 180 watt solar panel, so I got 360 watt, and I got three 100 ampere hour batteries, which is huge. So let me just pull that screen a bit up. Alrighty. Also, I need to lower down this music a little bit. By the way, if you like the music, I have a clip also on my Illumination YouTube channel. You just put in Illumination music or Illuvium music and you will find that 21 minutes of Illuvium music video on YouTube. I really like it. I'm gonna update it soon because that's like a few months old. They have, they have had so, so much good music out there already, but so much more has been released so i gotta update a little bit Alrighty, i think we need i don't know we want somebody else to thank vermilia except our oxidon so we're kind of running out of time i hope we i hope we'll be able to do this i really gotta, i gotta start focusing on the game now because we only have 60 seconds in competitive mode to do one run so if i start explaining while in the planning phase i might make a mistake Axodon right here is doing a good job tanking the Vermilia though. He survived his Omega. By the way, Omega is the word for ultimate or for ability or whatever you want to call it. Perfect. Vermilia was going to cast his Omega onto the Rake, but as soon as Rake casted his Omega, he went untargetable and cancelled the Vermilia's Omega. Which kind of saved the day. We might have actually lost on wave 7 there. Uh, on wave 6. But now we're on to wave number 7. Yeah, I'm super stoked about the setup. I really just want to travel the wor world in my van while I'm doing content for Illuvium. That's my dream and so far it has been coming true. I have not made too many dollars with it yet. I won one competition from Kieran Warwick. He did a video competition about the land sale and I won that. So that was, that was really nice to get my first earnings in, in my content creation career. But yeah, I still got a long way to go, but Illuvium is very early still. If you are here, you're one of the early people and we can really make and create something big in here. 
Alrighty, so there's an Umbre to be tanked, but I think we're just gonna ignore him. With you two guys over here. Actually, if we put our Axodon over there, he might run over to the Fury and not to the Singe. We would be pretty good, because this Singe right here, if he casts his Omega, he's gonna spin around and damage everybody that stands around him. So it's good to not have too many units standing around that Singe, and that's what we do. Everybody's going to that Fury. Knocking down the Fury, and now we're all moving on to the Singe, and hopefully we can kill him before he does too much damage to us. You see that everybody's getting some damage, but our Axodon right there, you can see it on the yellow bar. He's already hyperactive, because he is a Tsunami, which is double water, and he counters that four fires. And if you counter the enemy affinities, your hyperactive meter gets loaded, and once it's full, you get a lot of bonuses. Alright, Scoriox right here is a scary unit, but he's very squishy, he's a ranged damage dealer, so we're gonna position in front of him, try to kill him early on. Scarabok right there, he's a little tanky, a little tanky beetle. He will occupy the left side, all of these guys. Actually, I found the Scarabok in real life, I'm gonna show it to you later. It's really, really cool, I found it in France. Um, so yeah, our two rogues are just... We have 25 mastery points left over, so we're gonna sell this armor right there. Then we got 30 left over, and we can deploy a Kuka. I think it's gonna be the Kuka. Maybe just the Tatubi, actually. Kuka helps a lot with single target damage, but we have enough on the Scoriox. Actually, no, let's bring in the Kuka. He's so strong. Way better than the Tatubi, I think. So, wait, let me get that Scarabug for you. See that? It's my little chili plant with all those red chilies on there. And hidden in between here... Is this little guy. Look at that! Isn't he huge? Like, that's my finger. He's, like, almost as big as my finger. And now, now look at the resemblance. I want to put an erase in or something to... I think Illuvium did a great job recreating this this little thing. All right, let me just get something in because it seems like we're running out of time here. Um, what do we want? Oh, that looks like a hard, hard wave. I think we're just gonna get in the Arcos to get a bit tankier, and then we can get back the armor on our Ranger, and we're left with 10 mastery points. Which should be fine. Rangers, uh, our assassins going over to the Furyox, killing him. Everything else should be alright. I think our Arcos will be in range to heal everybody because as soon as he casts, as soon as he casts, he's healing everybody in a radius. You'll see it soon. Righty, our left side is in some trouble. To be honest, Malur is a hard target, but now the ram fight goes up in the air, blasts some fire down onto the enemies and we should be good awesome we're moving on to wave number 10 now stuff starts to get interesting bitch <laughs> yo shabim what's going on for everybody who doesn't know shabim is a hardcore twitch stream grinder and he does very very well he has taught me one or the other things he is almost every day up in those leaderboards and yeah, appreciate you, Shabim. So we got a Titanor right there. And it's always the question, do we ignore the Titanor? Or do we just focus it down early? I mean, there is no heal on the enemy team. Our two assassins will kill the C4s. Then the Fury. I want to get the Singe away from my main units. And we also got 35 point. Kuka can help a lot with that single target damage. So let's try to fit him in here somewhere bit hard to fit him in to be honest well it's not that hard he's tiny yeah there there you go look at that look at his face 
One of the most iconic units in the game, I feel like. Such a cutie. Alrighty, everything else should be fine. We used our mastery points pretty good, only five remaining. Scarabug is gonna take a lot of damage. We maybe should have split the damage a little bit more. But he, oh, he almost managed to get us his Omega, but in the meantime, Axodon raining down fire. Axodon was able... Wow, I just looked up for a second, Axodon is gone. I just wanted to say he was able to get hyperactive, but this Titan or Omega, Omega did so much damage. We really need this Arcos heal, but he's dead already. Now the Sinch is gonna spin into all of our units, and that's it. First round defeated at wave 10. That can happen. I'm not even mad. It's still a good round, but what we're gonna do now is play one round in casual and see how how far we can go up there. Because I want to have a nice, good placement early on, so okay, then we can chill. Because the last few streams we had, we were we were going over time because the last run was the best. We went one time up to rank number five, one time we were rank number six. So pretty stoked on that performance. It's easy to joke when you're on, on stream. What you're really missing is the damage, to be honest. Like, we have low tanks, but we have some decent tanks. We have some decent empaths, and I think we have to utilize the empaths to be a bit more... A bit our off tanks. Like, Adorado right here, he's a good off tank. And... But for the damage, we have a few good assassins, but not really a lot. Basically just Rake and Ramfight Ramfire. And looking at the science, we're not really good. We don't have a Scoriox, no Dual F. We don't have a Ripe Plants too. We don't are, we're not very strong in the fighter department either. So I think we gotta utilize those stage 2 units a little bit more. So the Ripterus is coming in. And the Rake is coming in as well. Alrighty, let's rush through those early waves and get up to wave number 10 again. Do you saute beetles with peppers? Maybe. If I would eat them, I probably it would pr probably be a good idea to saute them with peppers. I definitely would like to bring in some garlic. Garlic is like the goat of the spices, I feel like. And it's kind of in between a veggie and a spice, so... Alrighty. Right, let's zoom in and see what they're how those guys are looking. This animation is so good. It's really the counterpart part to this one. Raining down the fire onto that onto that nature. So, I think we're gonna try to get in Titanor a bit more early, not focus so much on the Axodon. Because the round we lost, like, I just wanted to say, oh, Axodon is full life and hyperactive, and I was looking up at the fire, looking down, and Axodon was gone. So, yeah, he's not the tankiest. He can do a lot of damage, though, especially once he goes hyperactive. And I guess we're just gonna bring the other reader right now and see how it does. It's a really good off tank. I mean, maybe not versus Vermi because her Omega silences our Adorado, so there could be some shenanigans happening. Yes, sir. Garlic and onion. That's the MVP of every dish I make. Forever alone? I wouldn't say that. You just gotta find a girl who appreciates good food. And who. Uh, I know, like. Most of the girls I know love garlic and onions. If somebody doesn't like garlic, I don't trust them. They could be a vampire, but they probably are, so... Yo, Talkie, what's good, my man? Good to see you. Jim the Ginge! Good to see you, too. Didn't change your name yet, did you? But I learned. Really good. How are you, man? Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We're gonna try to get up those leaderboards. Rank 1 right now is wave 22, so I feel confident that we might be able to crack that. I said feel confident, and then I said might be able. Doesn't sound so confident to me. Let's bring in a Blaze Knight and see what he does. I never play Blaze Knight because I feel like until the late game, he's not really worth the 90 mastery points. 
but I'm always down to to practice around a little bit. So so far he did, he hasn't done a lot of auto damage because he's a Templar, so there's a fighter in his composite, and he should once he casts his Omega though he does a lot of auto damage. So he definitely did a lot of damage, but I don't I don't feel like the 90 points are really worth it. But let's just try it out. Try him out a little bit and see. Let's try. Let him tank the Umbre and see what happens. I think he's not really up for it, but you know. Might as well try it out. Bring in the ramp fire. Just in case something goes wrong. And we're gonna roll it like this. We're gonna bring our ranger down here to tank the ramp fee. And really get a one-on-one -on -one between Blaze Knight and Umbre right there. No no, you're good. You're good. Jim, I appreciate you. You got a good name. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Umbre absolutely destroying the Blaze Knight, but luckily Ramfire is going up, coming down, and almost one-shotting the Ramfi. We almost choked on wave six again. Every time there's an Umbre, it's a really hard wave. Look at that damage. Well, actually Ramfi was doing the crazy amount of damage there. So, ramp fire right here is a natural counter to Adorius because he's double fire and he's really good versus air in nature. So we're gonna try to let him do his thing over there. Uh, Blaze Knight goes out. We're gonna get in a Vermi because Vermi is a really good counter to Vermilia and Vermilia. She counters her two biggest sisters, so we're gonna give that a test. Then we still got so much money left. We're just gonna bring in a Fury and the Kuka. And actually bring the Kuka down there and see if those two little cuties can take up Vermilier. As you see, Ramfire Omega is loading very fast. As soon as it's loaded, every third auto hit of his will. Oh, that was a big heal. Every third auto hit will silence the target, so now there is no more heals coming from Adorius. Except Ramfire is up in the air. Oh, but he managed to kill up, kill the Adorius. So basically now we're down for a one-on-one -on -one between Ramfire and this Vermilia. Love it. I love one-on-one -on -one scenarios. There is coming a Vermilia cast, but actually Ramfire manages to get up in the air and dodge that Omega. What a champ. One of my favorite units in the game. Always feels so good when you slam him, slam him, slam him on the battlefield. Because either he just wrecks everybody and carries you the game, or he's useless. So it always feels like a bit of a lottery. Alright, let's try. Vermilia is tanking the Umbre right there. Probably gonna sell the Fury. That will give us 70 gold. And we can bring in the Adorado. Adorado would be a better tank for the Umbrido. And our Vermi can try to tank the Ramfire. Our Cuckoo is gonna help with the single target damage on the Singe. And our Ramfire is gonna obliterate that Fury. Let's hit it. Hell yeah. Dude, Illuvium has been so good in putting out content these last few days and weeks it's crazy all those like crazy leaks from grant and andrew and all the luvia talks and all that stuff it's been really good even the kuka cave <laughs> or the kaka cave with uh with rich was amazing <laughs> such a good name the kaka cave i really like to call him kuka though I guess in English you would say kaka, but kaka in most languages just means, you know what, big business. So I like to go with kuka. And it makes more sense to me because like cuckoo is like a bird or something. I don't know. I'm getting weird. Alrighty, let's focus that Scoriox after we dealt with the Tatupi over here. I don't know if you want to keep Vermi in for those. Might as well upgrade to a Scarabok. Maybe even an Axodon. But Axodon is not going to do so good versus those natures. So, maybe a Rake. 
Just really ape in on those assassins, get a lot of damage in. We could actually sell the Kuka, sell that armor and get an off tank something in. Either Vermi or Axon. Let's get in Axon just to tank those two and you're tanking this guy. And actually you're tanking those two, you're tanking this and you're taking the Scoriox. Let's see what it goes. Let's see what happens. Wow, this... Wow, the auto hit's doing so much damage on our Oxen. Is he gonna able, be able to get his shield out? Yes. He's gonna stay alive. Wonderful. Adorado coming in with the heal. And everybody is still well. Our Ranger died early on, but that was a given because we sold her. We sold her armor, so she gets way less tanky once she loses that armor. Wonderful. I think we're gonna definitely keep in Rake and Ramfire for the rest of this run. Because they're our main damage. Maybe we're gonna downgrade Ramfire to be the Ramfight. Maybe we're gonna do that right now. Because then we would be able to get in a Ripterus. Axodon or Kukarov, Which are all really good units. But I think Ripterus would be really good in killing that Singe. So that's what we're gonna go for. Also I feel like downgrading Axon to be... Or switching Axon to be a Vermi. Would provide us with a bit more tankiness with against those two guys. And yeah, Adorado can tank the Furyox because we're gonna focus the Furyox with our two assassins. You're gonna tank the Singe. And I think that's how we're gonna roll it. I'm really curious how Burmy is gonna do against this Ramphy. And we're gonna have a look right now. Oh, actually, that's the Malura too, but that's fine. That's even better. I almost thought like Vermi was an overkill to just tank Ramphi. Uh, look at that heal coming in from Adorado. That was really good. Ram <laughs> Vermi actually running away from the Ramphi Omega, dodging that. Absolute legend. And we are good. No, thank you. I'm gonna stay sweaty all, all for this stream. Streaming is like a sport, you know? Yes, sir, it's a workout. Good, thank you. <laughs> so, we're back at that Titan, our big, big, scary Titan. Last time he cast down an Omega and they almost destroyed us. So, our two assassins are still gonna jump this C4. Is. Our Adorado here is a perfect target to for the Lulura. He can tank the Lulura forever. That's what he's gonna do. We don't need the Vermi. Selling the Vermi. We could use a bit more damage, to be honest. Actually, our Rip Ripterus right here can take the Titan or on his own, I think. Our Ranger can take the rest. She needs her armor back, though. Now we got 55 gold. And we're probably gonna get a Kukaraf in. Maybe an Axodon, let's see. Wow, we got a lot of two air, two nature, two fire, two water, two rocked. <laughs> That's crazy. So anything we deploy right now, we will get a big bonus. It's just a question, which bonus do we want? Oh, we have no time. We can really think it through. That's good. Um... So, if we get the air, our range is going to get way more tanky. That's going to be good. We get the Oxidon, we're going to get one water stack, which is not so nice. So, I think it's going to be the Kukurov. Also, if Kukurov stays alive, she is so strong in the late game. That's why we want to get rid of that enemy Kukurov as soon as possible. Oh, Shabim was doing squats between runs. Respectable, respectable. I could do that, but I choose not to. So, I think we're good. I'm really not sure if we got enough damage for the Titanor. I think we want to focus away from that Singe. And I think we're just going to roll it and see what happens. Titanor Omega, that's the, that's the, the hardest thing. 
the hardest obstacle in this run. I hope we get a nice heal and onto our ranger. She's dropping pretty low. Heal is coming now, just a second too late. But we're able to heal up the Ripterus, doing some nice damage on the Titanor. Really good. Titanor died without even casting his Omega. Another heal from the Adorado. He's just so, so good positioned versus the Lulura. He's gonna get infinite mana. And yeah, Rake doing so much damage. Just like Ombre, Rake is such a strong and consistent damage dealer. He's not too good in single target damage, but overall damage is really, really good. All right, we're getting a ramp fire right here. Oh, actually we're on wave 11. We just beat wave number 10. So we are on a new highlight. Look at that. I copied a little thing from Shabim. And so we're gonna get in highest wave counter right there in the top left. So our assassins do want to jump the Furyox, definitely. Ramfire is usually so so easily countered by a right plants the stage true of this line. I'm not sure if a Ripterus can do that. Does anybody in the chat know if a Ripterus can one on one the Ramfire? I don't think so. I think he might just be a little bit short on that. Our Adorado is not the best target either to tank that ramp fire, but we might just sell sell the armor on this guy, get in a Kuka. Then we're gonna sell this Kuka Ruff and get in an Axodon or a Scarabok. Probably a Scarabok is the better. And these three guys are a single target ramfire killing machine. Ripterus does a lot of single target damage. He stings his enemy, dealing a lot of damage. And Kuka stuns his enemy and also makes everybody focus them with extra damage while they're stunned. So, yeah, Kuka is like the ramfire counter. We don't even need this guy, I think. Just those two can easily kill the ramfire. Gonna bring him to the front line. Play it like this. Actually, our our Adorator wants to tank something, so he's gonna tank the Fury Ox right there. Like that. Let's hit it. See what happens. Beanstalk. Nope. Need Kuka. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. Uh, I should have should have watched the chat, but I yeah, uh, I thought so. I remembered so, but like this, it works perfectly. Ramfire didn't stand a chance. Our Ramfire is going up, blasting a huge Omega into everybody, dealing so much damage. And yeah, Rake and Ramfire, they're gonna be our main damage dealers. There's not much else we have. Titanor does a lot of damage, but yeah, he's the goat of tanking, and that's why we're gonna bring him in, bring him in soon. First of all, let's get back the armor. Always do that. If you sell the armor next round, get it back. Then do your calculations, do your positioning and everything. And then when you need 10 gold, you can sell it again. But it feels too bad if you if you forget, it, forget about selling it. So our two assassins are probably going to jump to dual left because he's a more imminent threat. Scoriox needs some time to ramp up, but he needs to be dealt with as well. So our ramp fire killing squad right here is gonna move up to the left side to kill the Scoriox that should be enough place them a little bit back so Scoriox focuses the Scarabok we got that 24 gold uh, 25 gold left over so gonna do something with this we could upgrade the Kuka to be a Kuka Ruff and I think that's gonna work out pretty well Get Scarabok really up in the middle. So Scoriox has no other chance than focusing the, the Scarabok. Adorator right here can tank the Axodon and the Fern. And our Ranger can take the Ripe Plants and the Dual F. Alrighty, looks good. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's always good if... It's like when you, when you check at, like, at school when you check over to the mate if he's doing the same thing it's not cheating it's just checking checking if you're you're right yourself alrighty and we were very right on this round 
nobody was hit by the Ramfight Omega, which is always a huge win. Ramfight is one of those units that can make or break you. If you manage to play around him nicely, he can be useless if he's in the enemy team, but if you like if he blasts an Omega into all of your core units here, you're, you're screwed. So there is a lot of assassins coming in, and right now I wish we had a Singe or a Seer, but we don't have that, so I guess we're gonna bring in a Titanor. Because the one thing that counters assassin really well is tanks, bulwarks. So let's get some of those in. Probably gonna keep our Scarabog. Maybe just gonna sell the Kukarov, that's gonna give us 80. Hmm. It's a tough one. 100 mastery points is so much. So our two assassins are gonna jump the C Forest. Our Adorado can tank the C Forest. Actually, our Adorado can also tank down here with our Ranger, those two assassins coming in. I don't think we need uh, the Kukara for this round, so we're gonna sell him for sure. If we sell the Scarabok as well, we can bring in the Titanor and we still have 30 gold for the Kuka. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Titanor is gonna tank the ramp fight right there, making him hyperactive, keeping him safe till a late game. And a full life hyperactive Titanor is just so OP. So that's gonna work out really well. I'm gonna put him on the right side, so when he shoots his Omega in this direction to the furthest unit, he's maybe gonna even hit ramp fight. Usually not because he walks up a bit, so ramp fight is behind him, but you now you gotta try. And those two are really wanna make sure. Both of them tank one of the enemy. Malura, his Omega is going to hit both of them, so that's a bit scary. So what we could do is position them like this. Both of them units are going to land next to each other in the furthest line if they have space for it. And then one of them will go to each of our tanks and off tanks here. And we just need the Kuka. And this here is very scary, to be honest. So we... The thing is, if we do it like this, ramp fight right here is way harder to kill than a ramp fire. Because a ramp fire takes forever to load his Omega, but a ramp fight does it quite quick. So I'm not sure if Kuka will be able to stun the ramp fight before he casts his Omega and kills everybody. That's why I'm hesitant over here. But I think we're gonna try it because frontlining Riptors and Kuka is not an option. We need the Titanor up here. And yeah, I think that's how we're gonna play it. Tough one. It is tough one. We could also sell the Ripterus to bring in the Scarabog, and then the Scarabog can tank the front line. That might be the best. Oh, we can't sell anymore. Whatever. Let's see. Let's see if we did it good. It might work out. I think we we almost counted everybody. I hope we can wreck this ramp fight and I hope if he goes up in the air we can at least run away. But Kuka loads his Omega faster than he does. Now he's stunned and we'll manage to kill him before he goes up into the air. Wonderful. Worked out really good. All of our other units are quite low as well but Titanor is hyperactive so he's regenerating a lot of health and giving us the tankiness we need but our ramp fight right there dies so all our main damage dealers are dead now it's all up for to the titanor basically nice stun onto the blaze knight just when he was about to cast his omega which basically won us the round i might say but yeah titanor will be able to sustain those two assassins maybe the umbre cast will would have damaged him but a big omega cast finishes off the umbre securing us the victory Really happy we brought in Titanor, such a strong unit. And I think he's gonna stay in there. Those three units are our core units because the two most important things in this game are tanks and damage dealers. This guy is the best tank and those two guys are the best damage dealers we have in this deck. So that's why they're gonna stay in. We can always swap out Kuka and Adorado. They are more situational. Especially for this Ramfire right here, we learned Kuka and Ripterus counter Ramfire very well. We're gonna do that. Adorado here is gonna tank the Umbre on the other side. So that's gonna be good. Our two assassins are gonna jump the Sinalf. 
And... Our ranger is gonna keep the Riplans away from the Titanor because the Riplans can really hurt our Titanor. So we wanna keep him away as long as possible. We also still got 25 mastery points left over, but I don't wanna sell the Kuka. So, but if we downgrade the, the armor to get a Tatopi, that's not a really good call either. So what else can we do? We could downgrade one of the rogues. We will get 25 gold if we downgrade the Rake to be a Lura. It would be enough damage to kill the Sinalf. Probably not before he casts his Omega, but the Sinalf laser doesn't do too much damage. So I think that's what we're gonna do. And then we can get in maybe the Scarabuck. Maybe a Fury to shred through those tanks in the front line. Probably Fury is a bit too slow though. We need some imminent damage, so... It's a hard call. That is a hard call. Looking at affinities and classes, it would be nice to get a nature and an empath, so Arcos would do us really well. He would also provide another bulwark stack, getting us a bit more tanky. So I think we're just gonna go with that. And we want to place him, if we place him like this, kind of in the middle of our two frontline tanks, he will heal them, hopefully. And that's going to be really good. Alrighty. I think we're good. Let's roll it and see what happens. There we go. Ramfire is dying. Adorito is getting a nice heal onto our Ripterus. Perfect. Just in time. Our Arcos right there healing our frontline tanks. Ramfight coming in with a big Omina, uh, Omega. And we're good. That looks wonderful. We were tanky enough to just withstand everything. All our units are basically full health. Well done. Ramfight right here did a lot of damage. Ripterus did way more damage than I thought as well. But Lulura or Lura right here didn't do a lot. And we're gonna upgrade him to be a rake again. Because Rake is so much more consistent. And they're both gonna go onto the Scoriox, one of the biggest threats an enemy can have. So, yeah. There is one Assassin coming in, two Assassin, three Assassins coming in. Versus the Vermilia, I like to have a Vermi. So I guess we're gonna sell the Kuka right there, get a Vermi in versus the Vermilia. Not sure what to do with our Ripterus. Our Adorado can definitely tank the Umbre. And our Ripterus, I guess, can tank the Lulura. Feels a bit like a waste, so maybe we're gonna put our Ranger back there. And we're gonna focus the Oxidon. The earlier he's done, the better. Ripterus right there can even tank the Oxidon. And Arcus right here can heal those guys up. I think we're looking pretty good right that, like that. And I think we're gonna roll it. I hope the Scoriox doesn't attack the Adorado. We can get a bit of a bird's eye vision in here and see if that happens. Maybe. So let's just get him a bit over there. And this guy a bit over here. Then we should be better. Alrighty. Let's hit it. Good luck to everybody. And I think this is going to be a clean, clean wave. Everything is going good so far. Scoriox is dying. Axodon will be fall will be falling soon. Our Titanor is dead though. So we had too much damage onto the Titanor. But we still have some tanks in place. Our Arcos is pretty tanky as well if he wants to be. Our Adorado is still blasting out heals. And now it's all up to our ramp fight right there. Actually, this is looking super, super bad. Adorado coming in with a heal, but I think wave number 50 might have gotten the best of us. Yes, sir. But I'm stoked. First, we managed to get up to wave 9, wave 10, and now we managed to get up to wave 15, so next up is wave number 20. That's only my second game of the day, so... Gotta, gotta stay patient. So, to get in the leaderboards, we gotta go get to wave 17 or at least 18 to be like nicely placed in the leaderboards 
And it's such a close leaderboard today. 17, 18, 90, 20, 21, 22. Alrighty, let's get it. I'm on fire. I want to get that. Alrighty. Let's play something else. Let's play something fun. We're going to play only stage 1 Illuvials until we place them all and then we're going to put in some stage like then we can play whatever. But we're going to play only stage 1 Illuvials until we all play them all. And what you will see is they are so strong. <laughs> we're going to have no trouble until like wave 12 or whatever. Woo. It's getting hot. Dude, today I saw Rich for the first time. And every like I heard him talk so many times and every time I had this profile picture of his in in my mind. So I really really got like in my subconscious was so sure he's looking exactly like his profile picture. And then when I saw him on stream, it was like not at all like imagined. And I was like, wow, what is happening? What did you do with Rich? Like it was it was such a weird feeling. Like I'm sure you had that before if you have like online friends and you game with them every day, every week. And you get like a, a weird image in your head about them. And then you see them and they're not at that like all. But that was really funny. Nah, uh, he's a good looking, good looking man. I thought he was like... I really thought he looked like his profile picture. He's one of the reasons I went for the mullet, so... <laughs> I'm I'm kind of disappointed he, he doesn't have that mullet. Maybe one day I, I get him to, to shave one. Ooh, that feels good. It's way too hot for a hat. We have like 35 degrees in here. Alrighty, so we need more stage 1s. Let's see what we got. can sell the 45 to get in this guy and that guy. Vermi versus Vermi. Love to see it. Let's see what happens. Those four guys can definitely one on one, uh, one on four a blaze knight. Oh, I love those mirror matches. Oh no, stop interfering. This was going so good. Best point is when they both wiggle their tail and slash it at the same time. Alrighty. So, what we got here? What do we have? Always those 25 mastery points. And the worst thing is you can't like downgrade your armor to get 5 mastery points. To have those 30. You can get either 4 or you sell it all. So <laughs> I hope that changes a bit. But maybe it's on purpose just to screw with us. Everybody's gonna focus the Furyox. Our range is gonna tank. And... Uh, are we gonna sell this guy? And maybe the armor of the ranger? And then we can get in theory. Oh, miscalculation. Well, I guess we're just gonna upgrade one of those 30 cost units to be a Scarabok. Scarabok will do a good job against the uh, against the Ramphy back there. You go and uh, go tank this guy. Right, let's hit it. What the hell? We're already one hour in. By the way, this stream goes for two hours, so we gotta get to it and get in those leaderboards. But it's pretty, like, once you crack through, I think 15 is a bit of a breakaway and 17, I guess, because there's so many people who died. No, wait, 18. Many, many people are on 17 in the leaderboards, so 18 is definitely kind of a breakaway. And once we're through that, you know, We'll, we'll figure it out, is what I'm trying to say. Alright, two assassins coming in here. What about those stage ones? We got a Tattoo P 
to deploy. By the way, I'm sure you noticed that C4 is like C4 and stage 2 is called TNT. TNT. And Tattoo B apparently is one of, is the strongest explosive of all of them. And it's the stage 1. And I think it's used in nuclear bombs or something. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah. The stage 1 named Tattoo B is an explosive that is the strongest. Stronger than C4, C4 and TNT. Fun fact. Fun illuvial fact. Another fun fact, if we position all those guys back there in the left corner, they're gonna focus Ramphy because the Axon is too far away from them. So, I wanna kill that Ramphy. Let's try it out, see what happens. There we go, everybody's going over there. Focusing the Ramphy. Ramphy's gonna go up in the air now, though. Doing a lot of damage. Now, actually, everybody's running away from him, so he didn't do a lot of damage, but... You know, he has a little thing from the fire. Fire Luvial's Omega abilities empowers the next attack to deal additional splash damage. And it's a little bit bugged and does more damage than intended. And that's why you saw Ramphy, even though he, he failed his Omega, then his, his auto hit, like, did half of the life, like, almost one shot two other Luvials. So yeah, that's why sometimes a ramp fight, which is fire, is stronger than a ramp fire, which is the stage 3 with Inferno. Because Inferno has, has a different buff and it's not bugged. Alrighty, let's get in that Vermi versus the Vermilier. We need 10 gold, so Ranger, get naked. No, she's already naked. I didn't even notice. Bam! Alright, he's just gonna upgrade that to be. Oh, what happened? There we go. This one could be a hard one, because those... Well, no, it should, it should be fine. Actually, we should be fine. So, the Vermilia is gonna land right here. So, if we put our Vermi onto his like left shoulder... He's gonna land here. We can move him over a little bit because he's gonna choose the next free spot in the back line if there is one. And I guess everybody else is gonna stay over here. Let's dress up our ranger and roll it. Wait. Chugging water over there, obviously. Alrighty. Easy peasy. What a sweet wave. We're moving on to wave number seven. How many stage ones do we got left before we can play something else? Three more. So that's about four more waves, three more waves. Ramp fire right here is gonna get a lot of units targeting him. We can even, like we did before, put our Scion ranged units in the corner right there, and then they're gonna focus ramp fight from the beginning. Play it like this. You're gonna try to tank Ombre, and you guys gonna. Well, actually, you're gonna go here and. Ah, no. Do it like that. It seems so easy. Once you start playing stage ones, it's the game gets too easy. Until you hate that eight of eight illuvial placed phase. Oh wow! Actually, run away. They stayed. They died. It's so nice if you let rare melee units tank the ramp fight. Soon he goes up into the air. Everybody's gonna run away, find a new target, and dodge his omega. So that's one way to really play around the Ramphy line. So, 30 mastery points. Undress that ranger. Get the lure in. Everybody on to Scoriox. You tank Scoriox, Scarabok.
like that and our range is gonna tank this side with the help of Wormy. Awesome. Actually, let's put our Lura all the way over there and then she or he or it will also attack Scoriox. Easy peasy. As soon as you take out Scoriox, usually the game is won. Because most of the game, Scoriox will be the main damage dealer. And if Scoriox stays alive, you're screwed. He gets more and more attack speed because he's an Arcanite. And he will start melting your Illuvial's faces. Two assassins coming in. Fieriox right there is a bit of a free kill. We're gonna put back that arm on our Ranger. Probably gonna focus the Singe first. If he's out of the way, he can't be any more threat. Because Singe get more and more tanky the longer he lives. Our Scarabog is gonna tank the backline right there with the help of Vermi. And that's gonna be it, I think. I'm not sure if Lurie can actually take down Ferex fast enough, so we might actually position to the left. Just to have that Fury and Tatopi extra damage onto the Fury Ox. Which is one of the biggest threats after the Assassins. Do it like this. See what happens. How many stage 1 do we get left? I think 1. Yes! Alfie the only one. We need 2 more rounds to get the money to deploy him. And then we manage to beat the, uh, the stage 1 challenge. Which is always so easy like I said. And you can see it like game gets easier the more stage one are on the field we will try to get as far as possible into the late game into the later waves of the game with stage one illuvials but we definitely gotta start swapping out some of them malura is gonna do mean things to our two little cuties there but the rest of them are gonna avenge them look at those guys ah they're too cute! Ugh. Makes me angry. Alrighty, actually, we don't need another wave because if we sell this armor, we got the 50 gold to deploy the Alfie. And now all our stage 1 Illuvials are out. 8 out of 8 placed Illuvials. No more stage 1 there. Love it. Challenge completed. Our Lure is gonna jump the Fury. Oh! That's wave number 10. That could be hard. If we stay on the left side and ignore Titan or his Omega is gonna meow, go through all our stage ones and just one shot them probably. So I think we have to focus all our strength onto this Titan or and try to kill him as fast as possible. That's gonna be fun. I like it. That's a nice challenge. Alrighty, everybody get over here. Actually, we got three Scions, so we have a fair amount of damage. And yeah, we have actually a pretty, pretty solid stage one composition right here. Mm, we don't even need to tank the Lulura, I think. We want to occupy the left side, so we're all alone with the Titanor. So you're gonna go here. You're gonna go here. And that's it. That's all. Let's see how it goes. Good luck to everybody. No, 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 I shove him. It's the stage one challenge till now, and now we're done with it, and we're gonna keep climbing. So we're not gonna just stop putting in stage one Illuvials now, and just accept our fate. Wow, that Singe does a lot of damage to those stage ones. Alrighty, I guess, I guess we're done, so. Oh, I was so close too. If Seaforce didn't have got, uh, hasn't gotten his Omega out, he would have just, <laughs> we would have done it. Look at that damage. Alrighty, we're back at it. Stage 1 challenge is over. Let's get in the ramp fire and let get it going on. I love it. Always good, but yeah, you're right. We gotta keep climbing. We only have one hour left and a good run takes at least half an hour. Probably one hour with the amount I'm talking, so... Let's get up to wave 22. I see you, Shabim. I saw your stream. You went up to 21. 
I didn't copy those screenshots. Maybe just one. But yeah. We're gonna try to copy that. Well, not literally copy. I wanna have this as original as possible. And... Uh-huh. Close to, yes, super close. Let's see Forest, man. Like, see Forest is always trolling, right? Except when it's in the enemy team. Alrighty. Let's just hit the play button. I believe in Ramfire. Ah! Well, it's a good wave to hit the play button. Didn't I put lure on C4s? Or was it on the Fury? Ah. Oh, well, you might be right. I thought C4s was too much for Lura, but actually C4s is so squishy. And also the stun could have interrupted some cast of his. Whereas Fury doesn't do much till like a few Omega casts into it. Alrighty. What's better than one Ramfire? A ramp fight in addition. Let's go. That is very true. No, you're right. The only the Malura stuns. Lura and Lulura don't stun. But I feel like even though C Forest is a granite, he's not tanky at all. Like, uh, Scoriox is way tankier than him. The Fury might be tankier than him as well. After all, he's only 55 mastery points. So, he's such a strong unit, somewhere he gotta have those deficits. How many more rogues can we put in? Rogue challenge, let's go! Rake and Lura come on the battlefield. Lura feels kinda underwhelming though. I really like Lolura. Lolura, I think, is really strong. Malura is really strong as well. But kind of needs the late game to work. But Ramfight and Ramfi are just such powerhouses. Not a challenge, huh? Yeah, yeah, I need some... I need some... Excuses if stuff goes wrong, obviously. You know it is. You know it is. Um, yeah, should we get in that Axodon? He can tank the Vermilia pretty well. Let's try to see that. You always gotta do that. You always gotta check how stuff handles one-on-ones. You need to know how units perform versus specific other units. I need to know if Axodon can survive a Vermilia cast right here. Oh, he can survive it, but it wasn't that good. Like a Burmy almost does better than a Vermilia than the Axodon did. Ow! Oh, come on, kill this guy! What's happening? Thank you! Vermilia is one of the <laughs> Love that. The double double emote. Vermilia is one of the strongest units in the game and we're really missing her. Especially in the late game. Alright, I don't know how long we can run with Ramfight Ramfire, so let's keep on with our challenge and put in a rake. <laughs> nah, 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 I can't do that. We gotta get in some tanks, especially versus all those incessants. So we're gonna get in that Scarabok and probably a Kuka. Can't Kuka do an Umbre? I think it's all about if he can dodge two attacks, I think he can stun Umbre. Otherwise he's screwed, so let's just put him in the front line and Umbre is gonna run around for nothing for a little while. Like right now, Kuku is gonna definitely get out their Omega onto the Singe, even though she's getting focused. Oh, a big crit coming in from Umbre. Never say an Amber. Alright. Ramfire coming in with a big Omega. Enemy Ramfire Omega is gonna be dodged. Our Ramfire is gonna carry the game now. Two more auto hits. Oh, Whew. getting scary. Uh, 
I got like five excuses ready. Thanks, man. Thanks for the honesty. <laughs> ah, it happens. This game is really hard. Like, no matter... Like, we have all played it for hundreds of hours now, probably. And it's... It's a tough auto battle. It's like a puzzle auto player right now because, you know, always the same waves. We only have like 10% of the game released right now. This is just one game mode of 10, 20 game modes, you know, and the overworld and everything. So this is such a little fraction of the game, but it's so much fun already. And this right now plays a bit like a puzzle where you got to figure out your perfect moves. And this is going to change soon, so in the long run, it's supposed to play like uh, speed chess. Think fast, do the best you can, you'll never figure it out perfectly in the time you got. So kind of like competitive mode. Do we really want to keep those two in? I feel like just the rake instead of the, instead of the ramp fight will, would be a way better idea. Looks good, let's go. Sweet. Everything going according to plan. Kukorov would be nice if you can cast an Omega. Thank you, my man. Takes him forever to cast an Omega, but once he does, or she or it, uh, she shields the whole team, uh, which is really good. Big Omega coming in. We'll do so much damage. Bye bye. And we got a lot of attack speed stacked on the ramp fire, so no problem for him to kill this place knight. Show us what you got. Yeah. Man, if I catch this ramp fire, I'm gonna remember that day forever, I think. Probably the most iconic unit in the game. I really can't wait to get out there in the overworld and catch my own Pokemon uh, Illuvials. That's gonna be a glorious day. I'm not stressing. I'm really happy with what we got, but once we got the overworld released, like as open beta or whatever, where we catch our own NFTs, it's gonna be mind blowing. So many people are gonna die from starvation and dehydration because they can't 